Hello, my name is Colin Doyle and I'm a Senior Systems Engineer at Juniper Networks. This is the fourth video in a series that demonstrates to the viewer how to install, configure, and operate the Juniper Cloud CSO SD-WAN spoke test environment on their own laptop or desktop computer. In my previous video, we set up our VSRX secure SD-WAN gateway. In this video, we will be deploying a guest to act as an SD-WAN client behind our secure VSRX gateway. This client will allow us to access internet resources. It will also include a trick little Python script that can automatically open and navigate into websites we specify. This allows us to passively generate interesting traffic to view in our CSO SD-WAN tenant portal. Let's begin. Like our WAN emulator, our client system will be running Raspbian. If you're comfortable with the process of installing a Raspbian guest in Fusion, feel free to skip ahead. If you require this file and you don't still have it from the second video, or you're just watching this video on its own, there is a link to the file that I'm using, a pre-built installation on osboxes.org. It can be found in the companion documentation for this video series. I like using this pre-built package because it provides a VMDK file that allows me to deploy Raspbian quickly without having to go through the process of letting the kernel build and compile. Start by clicking plus and then go to new. Here we're going to create a custom virtual machine. Click Continue. Keep this default of other Linux 4.x or later kernel and use a legacy BIOS. Here we'll define using an existing virtual disk and we'll navigate to the VMDK file that we've downloaded. Select Finish. We can customize our settings after our first boot. Actually, you know, I'm going to change this memory value now. Mm, that's right. Customize means something different depending on the type of machine you're building. I'm going to name mine RPI Clients. It's the name of the virtual machine. It'll copy the disk, and I believe it'll automatically boot. If it does, I'm just going to stop it so that I can modify the memory value. Yep, sure did. Power off. Okay, so let's right click and go to settings. We're going to make two changes here. First, we're going to increase the memory up to one gigabit. You can use more if you like. I have found this to be adequate. You can probably use less, but I can't vouch for the performance of your client. I'm also going to add an additional network adapter. I do this because initially we're going to have to install packages on this virtual machine. For the WAN emulation. Because this is going to be connected to the LAN side of the VSRX, we'll need a path to the internet to download these packages. I'm going to connect this to my Mac that will allow me to get to the internet. And then I'm going to go into network adapter, the primary network adapter, and I'm going to connect this to the LAN VM, which sits on the LAN side of our VSRX guest. This done, I'm going to go ahead and boot the image. Once we have all our packages installed, I recommend disconnecting that second network adapter that we just added. Once this lab is in operation, we will only want a single path to the internet through our VSRX and across our SD WAN fabric. Because this is a custom VMDK, I need to use a custom password. The custom password for any of the images that are downloaded off of osboxes.org is osboxes.org. We'll be changing this, of course. Once you're to a desktop, click on this Raspberry, go to Preferences, and then go to Pi Configuration. I'm going to change the host name. 
the RPI dash client. Actually, I'm going to just change this to RPI. Forgive me. There we go. I'm going to change the password. That hostname is relevant to another part of the config, but there's no reason to make it more complex than it needs to be. And I'm going to change the time zone. I don't need to do that. And yes, so we'll reboot now. When this comes back up, we'll start a CLI configuration. Once you're logged back in, open up a terminal window. First, confirm connectivity to the public internet. Perfect. Now we're going to make the adjustment to our host file to speed up our sudo commands. If you haven't watched the second video or you've just forgotten why we're doing this, um, somebody that knows this system far better than I do can explain it better than this, but there's something about putting your host name as the loopback in the host file that speeds up sudo. Uh, oh, really? Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, ha, <laughs> sudo go slash etsy slash hosts. some sort of local lookup. It times out, sudo does work, it just takes forever until you make this modification to the file. The modification is instant. The second that you add this configuration and save it, things speed up. So we just put in the host name here and here, and that's it. Now if we run the same command again, you'll see it comes right up. Magic. All right, so now we're going to update our apt repository. Update. While this is taking place, let's talk a little bit about the first package we're going to install. It's a VLAN, and I bet you can guess what that is. The reason we need to install it is that when configuring an SD-WAN CPE, whether it's physical or virtual, it expects to be connected to a switch. Uh, and it expects to be connected to a switch over a trunk. Now, it might only be carrying one VLAN over that trunk, but it's a trunk port nonetheless, which means that if we want to connect a client system to the LAN port on a CPE, in this case, you know, our VSRX gateway, we're going to have to support VLAN tagging. Uh, and we don't, you know, we don't have that capability out of the box, so to speak, so we have to install this package. This will allow us to define a VLAN ID within our configuration, and then we just have to make sure we match that VLAN ID to the VLAN that we define when we deploy the site using the CSO tool. I'm also, while I'm here, just going to install um, Git because I'm going to be using Git to download the web traffic generator we'll be using. Okay, and I'm going to start with the web traffic generator because after I install the VLAN package and then configure the VLANs, that will be the end of the interface configuration we need to do, and then I can actually shut this down and disconnect the internet-connected interface that we created earlier. So just make sure we're in the home directory. We should be. Let's do a git clone. 
uh, you can go to this gentleman's website. I have a link in the companion documentation. The Capuano has an excellent explanation of this Python-driven uh, traffic generator. It's really small and elegant, and uh, I use it for all of my traffic generation needs. Perfect. If we do an ls la, we'll actually see we have a web traffic generator folder now. We'll get into that in a moment. I'm going to make sure we have all the dependencies installed. Already installed. Great. Already in the newest version. This is a pip command, pardon me, sudo pip install requests. I believe this will probably be installed already. This is just housekeeping, perfect. So let's go into the web traffic generation folder. We can see the gen.py Python script. That's what you execute in order to run the generation. And there's a config.py.template file. We're gonna copy this config.py.template file to config.py. This is the configuration. We're not going to get too deep into doing the config on this file, but if you do happen to you know, go into it, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'll show it to you here, but I'm not going to spend much time here. Uh, essentially, you can define how deep you click into each site. These are ranges, so it's not the same value each time, which I think is nice. Uh, wait times is all pretty straightforward. And then you can list as few or as many root URLs. It's kind of nice actually to have a number of Raspberry Pis connected to a CPE. You can create, uh, you know, you run web traffic generation off of each of them and then define URLs that fit specific uh, you know, web filtering categories. And you can you know, watch how the behavior works where like the access uh, from, to sites from one Pi that maybe has, you know, sports defined as a category that's restricted won't work. And then one that has maybe news categories uh, will. We'll get a little bit more into that in later videos with use case. For now, we're just going to leave this as is. Now we're going to go into the network configuration and we'll get our VLAN defined. So if you learned anything watching these videos, you know that we back up files before we edit them. Oh, forgive me, I need to run sudo on this. So familiar with Linux, if you ever need to sudo the previous command, you don't have to type it out again. You can do sudo and then do exclamation points or what we say bang bang, and it will run the command without you having to type it all out. Let's verify it's there, and it is. Perfect. Is that it? I'm going to be using ETH0, and for my particular installation, I'm going to be defining VLAN 71. Again, this VLAN just needs to match the VLAN that you use when you deploy your CPE. If you already have a network plan in mind, this VLAN will be a part of that plan. If you don't, just use whatever VLAN you want to and make note of it so that when we deploy your CPE, you can use that VLAN for your LAN configuration. And then as our last step, we'll configure, we'll go to Network Adapter 2. We don't need to remove this. Uh, it might be handy to leave it defined just in case you need to connect it to the internet again, if there's other things you want to download outside of the lab that we're creating. But for the purposes of this lab, we need to disable it so that we don't have a second path to the internet. And that's it. Our Raspberry Pi client is ready, and that concludes this video. The next few are going to be fun. This is where we're going to actually start provisioning and building out the lab environment and doing some testing. So I hope you'll join me. Thanks again for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Take care.